Praise the Lord. We rise up on our feet as we begin our retreat at this time. I welcome every one of you in Jesus' name. And for those who are coming for the first time, how happy I am that you are here. And I pray the Lord will fulfill every desire of your heart in Jesus' name. You are my guest and I pray that everything that will bring joy to your heart and fulfillment to your life and family, the Lord will do it in every life in Jesus' name. The Lord is here and the power of the Lord is here. Every mountain, he will roll away. Every work of the devil, he will destroy. He bring joy in your life. Happiness in your family. And I pray that every good desire you have, and beyond everything you can expect, the Lord will fulfill in every life in Jesus' name. Now to old timers who have been coming before, this is going to be a new experience. Something new. Something great. Something wonderful. More and more. Somebody there shout more and more. The Lord will accomplish it in every life. He'll wipe your tears away. Bring joy in your heart. And you'll find that this is a special time the Lord has reserved for you. And the blessings of the Lord will be like wells of water flowing out until eternal life. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this hour, for this moment. You've been waiting for us. And we have come. And we're asking, Lord, you will open the windows of heaven. And you will open all the treasures of heaven. And shower your blessing upon every life in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that nobody will be left out. Our children will be blessed. Our youths will be blessed. Our campus students will be blessed. Our daddies and mommies and elders and adults in the church, you bless everyone in Jesus' name. From the top to the bottom, we pray, Lord, that nothing of the devil will remain in any life. We pray that you'll break every yoke. You'll destroy every work of the devil. And you shower blessings from heaven upon all your people from this very night. Confirm your blessing in every life, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in the abundance of the blessings of God. As we come to this retreat, as our leaders have told you, and as we have heard from the announcements and proclamations and uh, the promotion publicity of the retreat, it's a special time. And it is something happening to you that had never happened before, even from this very night. Heaven will open up for you in Jesus' name. Every closed door will be opened. And the goodness of God will be unleashed upon every life in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 28 verses 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 28, reading from verse 16. It says, And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid. And said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. As you look at those verses, those two verses of scripture, it tells us about the experience of Jacob. He never expected what he saw. And he did not understand that it was the beginning of a great future. The beginning of something mighty, something wonderful that was starting at that time that will go on and on till the end of his life, beyond the end of his life, from generation to generation and to affect all the people that will come after him. 
and he said the bible says there he woke up he awake out of sleep and tonight it's like you're waking up everything that is dormant inside you will wake up everything that appears to be slumbering and sleeping will wake up tonight and then you say surely there's a surety coming upon your life a certainty coming upon your life it says surely the lord is in this place he didn't know that before and he said and i knew it not and i knew it not the lord the creator is in this place and i knew it not the lord the savior the redeemer is in this place and i knew it not the lord the resurrection and the life is in this place the one that will quicken you and make you come alive everything that is dead in your body in your soul in your life in your family everything will have resurrection power the resurrection power of the lord is in this place and i knew it not and then it says he was afraid that he is an all came upon him a kind of respect for the almighty god a kind of wonder about the almighty god came upon him and it says he was afraid and he said how dreadful how awe-inspiring how frightful is this place this is none other but the house of god understand remember it was an open place it was like a desert he was going on his way he was going from home and he was going to Laban. and just on the way there he saw his suit on the way there he slept and he saw this great manifestation of the greatness and the goodness of god and yet he said it is the lord's house and he said this is the gate of heaven as you come to this retreat this is the place the Lord will prepare you for heaven. Every qualification you need, every faith you need, every grace you need, anything you need that will get you ready so that you'll start a journey, a journey that begins today. And that journey will lead you on and on, will lead you forward, will lead you upward, and will lead you eventually until you get to heaven. That's the aim of God. That's the purpose of God. That's the goal. That's the reason you are here. And that's why we're starting tonight with this message more and more or less and less. That is, it's either this or that. There's no standing still. There's no neutral ground. It's not, you cannot say, I, I'm not going to get more and more, but I'm not going to have less and less. It's either this or that. It's either you are climbing up or you are sloping down. It's either you are moving forward or you are going back. It's either you are progressing or you are retrogressing. It's either you are having more and more or you are having less and less. More of heaven or less of heaven. More of goodness or less of his goodness more of what you desire or less and less of what you desire and the choice is yours you can make up your mind that as i come to this retreat to this very gate of heaven you can make up your mind i'm going to move forward somebody there i said i'm going to move forward somebody there i'm going to progress somebody there i'm going to climb up somebody there i'm going to have more and more i can't hear you i am going to have more and more and you have to make up your mind that as you follow the lord and as you come here every good thing in your life will increase every gracious thing in your life will increase you have to make up your mind that the glory of God and the honor of God and the inheritance of the Lord will increase in your life even from tonight. It will happen to you. You will pray, it will happen. You will obey, it will happen. You respond to the word of God, it will happen. More and more or less and less. We're looking at Psalm 115 psalm 115 and i'm reading here from verse 
14. Psalm 1, 1, 5. I'm reading from verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. That's the intention of the Lord. That's the promise of the Lord. That's the progress of the Lord. The, the, that's the program of the Lord. He wants you to increase more and more. He has brought you in for that purpose. And he's going to do everything in his own power. Everything in his own program. Everything from heaven. That's what he has promised. He has power to do. And he wants to accomplish that in your life. And he says, the Lord himself. Whether man wants it or not. Whether there are people blocking your way or not. Whether there are people that have the best intentions for you. Or they have the worst intentions for you. One thing is sure. The, the intention of the Lord for you is that you will increase more and more. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. If the children come, there will be showers of blessing. In our youth camp, there will be showers of blessing. In our campus camp, there will be showers of blessing. And of course, with you there in the adult section, showers, showers, showers of blessing in Jesus' name. In uh, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is at the shining light. The path of the just is at the shining light. Darkness will vanish from your path. Dimness will vanish from your path. And everything that is cloudy, I'm not sure of this. I'm not sure of that. I don't know about this. All uncertainty will get out of your life in Jesus' name. Uncertainty about the will of God, that will go away. The dimness of sight as to what does the future hold? What am I going to have in the future? All that dimness and ignorance will vanish away in Jesus' name. The path of the jaws is at the shining light that shines, tell me, more and more until the perfect day. That's talking about progress. What you get today will be more than what you got yesterday. What you are going to get tomorrow will be more than what you are going to get today. And next month will be higher than this month. And next year will be greater than this year. On and on and on. The path of the just is as the shining light. And it shines, it shines, continuous tense, it shines. The light of God will keep on shining upon your life. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. We're coming to first Thessalonians chapter 1. Chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 1. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren. That means now is reading with us to cooperate with God. We beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus. That as ye have received us, of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound, tell me, ye will abound, tell me out loud, you abound more and more, more and more, more and more, you are going to abound in Jesus' name. Scarcity forgotten, famine forgotten. Helplessness forgotten, hopelessness forgotten, sadness forgotten. I'm thinking, I'm confused, I'm, I'm perplexed, I'm on the crossroad, all that forgotten in Jesus' name. Because the Lord says, if you will listen and if you will accept the exhortation, He says, you will abound more and more. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, indeed, and indeed, ye do it towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia 
But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Increase, you will not decrease. Increase, you will not slide back. Increase, you will not fall. Increase, your life will not be terminated abruptly in Jesus' name. More and more, or less and less. The key is in your hand. If you make up your mind, I'm going to increase, you will increase. If you make up your mind, I'm going to progress, you will progress. If you make up your mind, heaven's showers will come upon me and come upon my family. It will happen because the Lord has promised. And because the Lord has the power. And then he says, he'll give you the intended and desirable progress in your life. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise. Number one is the promise. It talks about the promise then number two is the power you see every promise god makes he has the power to fulfill that he has the power to accomplish that he has the power even at this time to do it because there's no limitation of his power even if he needs to do a creative miracle in your life it's up to it and he will do it i see miracle coming your way I see impossibilities becoming possible. The incredible, the wonderful things of God. This is your night and this is your day. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Number one, the promise. Number two, the power. Number three, the progress. How grateful I am to God that God has planned and God has purposed. You will make progress. And from this very day, you will see the map will be before you. And the way will stretch out before you. Progress coming upon your life in Jesus' name. All those questions are answered. All those problems are solved. Number one, the promise of more fruitfulness despite famine. The promise of more fruitfulness despite famine number two the power of more from, of more faithfulness through faith the power of more faithfulness through faith number three the progress through more fellowship without filthiness the progress through more fellowship without filthiness number one is the promise number one the promise say my promise to be fulfilled in your life we're coming to some 115 again some 115 and we're looking at the promise of more fruitfulness despite famine that means whatever may be happening around you happening to your neighbors happening in your community happening in your place of work happening in your religious circles happening to people that are so close around you in your own case even though there is famine everywhere there'll be fruitfulness in your life fruitfulness in your spiritual life fruitfulness in your family life fruitfulness on your wife and fruitfulness on your husband if you believe it will be according to your faith. Psalm 115, I was looking at verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Mark it down. Every member of your family is beginning a new journey. Every loved one is beginning a new journey. And the Lord has decided in the courts of heaven that he will touch you he will touch your wife he will touch your husband he'll touch your children he'll touch everyone with a touch of increase because the lord says he himself will increase you more and more look at verse 2 wherefore should he then say where is now 
their God. Are there situations in your life? The people around you are saying, uh-huh, but where is your God? I believe in miracle. Where is your God? I believe in healing. Where is your God? I believe in transformation of life. Where is your God? I believe in divine provision. Where is your God? I believe this. I believe that. I believe in more and more. And then they said, where is your God? Let them wait. Your God has now come. His power has now come. But our God, in verse 3, but our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he has pleased. It has pleased him to bless his people. He'll do it. It has pleased him to save every repentant soul. He'll do it. It has pleased him to sanctify those who long to see him on the final day. He will do it. He has pleased him to baptize and immerse in the power of the Holy Ghost. Sanctified vessels. And he will do it. The Lord is in the heavens. And he is be whatsoever pleases him and then he tells us in verse 8 in verse 8 it says they that make them making idols shall be alike unto them so is everyone that trusts in them look at verse 9 O Israel O people of God trust thou in the Lord he is your help and your shield O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord is your help. The Lord is your shield. All those arrows thrown by the devil, they will not get to you. Arrows that fly by day. Arrows that fly by night. They will not get to you in Jesus' name. Every sin the devil intended to throw at you is that the dart of wickedness that he thought will bring you down, it will pass you by because the Lord is your shield and the Lord is your defender, and the Lord will help you. In verse 11, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield the Lord has been mindful of us he will bless us he will bless me he will bless me he will bless you in Jesus name he will bless the house of Israel he will bless the house of Aaron he will bless them that fear the Lord small and great you see that there's no discrimination there's no partiality. There is no exception. He blesses everyone. It's a good God. It's a loving God. And it's a loving creator. And then he tells us now, the Lord shall increase who? Shall increase you more and more. You and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth, the heaven, and the heaven of heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Notice that the earth he has given to the children of men. And all the fruitfulness of the earth he has given unto us. All the goodness of the earth he has given unto us. And all the progress, all the program he has, that this earth will be fruitful, he has given unto us. It tells us in verse 18, But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forever. Praise the Lord. We're looking at Psalm 37. Psalm 37, the promise of more fruitfulness during farming. This is your time of blessing. Is a time of increase, is a time of more and more. Psalm 37, verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Your inheritance will be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, mark this. In the days of famine, underline this. In the days of famine, take this to yourself. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. In the days of famine, 
Call be satisfied. They shall be satisfied. Look at verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. I said you will not be ashamed in the evil time. The Almighty God says you, can, you will not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, you will be satisfied. And then it goes on to tell us in verse 22. For such as the blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's why the Lord is calling upon you. That because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you continue in sinning, that's not a good man. If you continue without salvation, that's not a good man. If you continue in walking against God and contrary to God, that's not a good man. If you continue shunning God, neglecting God, abandoning God, that's not a good man. But if you turn around and you say, I give myself to Christ completely, wholeheartedly, without any reservation, I give myself unto the Lord. And you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he wipes away your sin. He converts your soul. He changes your life. And then he turns the bad man to be the good man. He converts, he changes the bad woman to become the good one. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his ways. Verse 25. I have been young and now I'm old. And I've not seen the righteous forsaken. I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor is seed begging bread. You will not beg. You will not even borrow. You will lend to other people. You will give to other people. But remember this is for the righteous. Those who are righteous, you need to turn. Because this blessing is waiting for you. And, but if you are righteous, you kind of uh, seclude yourself. Exclude yourself from the blessing of the Lord. But if you say, I see that one there. I've been begging from here to there. I've been borrowing from this and borrowing from that. And then the Lord is saying, if I turn around and I receive the righteousness of Christ upon my life, and he makes me righteous by the sacrifice of his blood. And I say, Lord, I believe. And then he wipes away my sins, takes away my unrighteousness, and I have the righteousness of the Lord. Then he says, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaking, nor his seed begging bread. The Lord a shower is blessing upon every one of us in Jesus name verse 29 look at verse 29 the righteous the righteous the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever verse 31 the law of his God is in his heart none of his steps shall slide verse 39 the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Trouble will vanish away. We're looking at Job. Fruitfulness despite famine. Job chapter 5. In Job chapter 5, reading from verse 19. Job chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 19. In verse 19, He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil taught thee. As you look around you, you might have seen people that get into problems. This problem, they wanted to move forward, problem confronted them. They wanted to achieve something and trouble hindered them. And the Lord is saying, keep on counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, even seven. Everything will clear away from your path. Because 
here is the promise of the Lord that he will deliver you in six troubles, yea, even in seven, they will not touch you. Verse 20, this is for you. I said, this is for you. Say, it is for me. Look at verse 20 here. It says, in farming, it shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. They shall be hid from the scorch. Thou shalt be hid from the scorch of the tongue. Whatever is on their tongue, and then they curse you, the Lord will hide you from that curse. Whatever is on their tongue, and then they say something derogatory, a black male, something to wreck you, something to ruin you, something to put you down. The Lord is your shield and your defender. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh at destruction and famine. Thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. It's talking about men or women that are beastly, that are wicked, that are cruel, that are oppressive. The Lord is saying, His favor is upon your life. And the Lord will protect you from the cruelty of beastly men and women in Jesus' name. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. And thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed, tell me, shall be great and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. The time of fulfillment has come for you. From tonight, more and more. I say from tonight, more and more. The Lord will do it even beyond your expectation in Jesus' name. How will that happen? How will He give us fruitfulness in the time of famine, joy, in the time of sadness, happiness, when everything looks to be upside down? Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, I read from verse 12. Joel chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 12. It says, Therefore now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil he gives us a condition here he says he's waiting here it's not going to move it's in the light if you're in darkness it's not going to come to you there in darkness it's righteous if you're righteous it's not going to move away from righteousness and come into righteousness to bless you he wants to bless you he wants to turn your life around. He wants to give you increase and progress. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be fulfilled. But says, look here, I'm in the light. Come out of that darkness and come to the Lord. If you are in a secret society, he says, it's not going to come there and bless you there. He says, come out of there. That's what he means by repent and turn and come to him over here he is light and there is no darkness at all in him and so if you are in darkness he says come out you come out of that darkness and you come to the lord and a day of glorious blessing will start for you in jesus name when you turn when you repent when you hold on to the Lord, when you ask Him for the forgiveness and for the cleansing, and you say, out of sin, out of disgrace, out of degradation, out of evil, out of wickedness, out of violence, Lord, I come unto you. Look at what will happen. Verse 18. 
then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. The Lord will come to you. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be, tell me, satisfied therewith. Satisfaction is coming upon your life. You come out of sin, you come out of darkness, you come out of evil, you come out of wickedness, you come out of violence, and it says, it shall be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Verse 21, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Where? In your life, he'll do great things. Your family, he'll do great things. At the retreat here, he'll do great things. To everyone around you there, he'll do great things. Beyond our expectation. He says, fear not. The things that bring fear and the things that bring panic into your life, into your heart, in your family, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field. For the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. Fruitfulness is coming. And the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Are they there? Be glad then, ye children of Zion. I said, are they there? Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month, and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25, and I will restore and I will restore tonight, and I will restore in this retreat, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, and the palmer worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer and the canker worm, and my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed from tonight people of God you will not be ashamed in Jesus name verse 27 and ye shall know that I am the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people once again shall not be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon my servants and upon the handmaid in those days will I pour out my spirit. There will be an overflowing of the outpouring of the spirit of God upon everyone in Jesus' name. Saved will be saved. Sanctified will be sanctified. Baptized in the Holy Ghost will be baptized in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. In verse 32, and it shall come to pass, even from tonight, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, tell me out loud, shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The Lord shall call. Thank God he has called me. I said, thank God he has called me. And I have answered. Have you answered? 
the deliverance of the Lord will be upon you in Jesus name point number three now is the power the power for more faithfulness through faith the power for more faithfulness through faith we're looking at Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 here but the path of the just is at the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day maybe you are not perfect yet but you are moving on to perfection and maybe situations around you are not perfect yet all situations are changing gradually is moving on to perfection and maybe all that you're looking for i'm looking for this i'm looking for that maybe they have not come in fullness and perfection but you're moving on you're moving on i said you're moving on and your path will shine more and more until the perfect day look at it from verse 11 now i have taught thee in the way of wisdom i have led thee in the right path when thou goest thy steps shall not be straightened and when thou runnest thou shalt not stumble that's your path that's your path the lord will hold you up in temptation he'll hold you up in trial he'll hold you up in all the oppressive things situations of life it will hold you up in jesus name now verse 13 hold fast hold hold take hold take fast hold of instruction let her not go let her uh, keep her for she is thy life enter not in the path of the wicked it's telling us again it's saying all these benefits all these opportunities they are for the people that are following the lord like you are wanting to follow the lord and you're following the lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and you're not turning back at all it says enter not in the path of the wicked go not in the way of evil men avoid it pass not by it turn from it and pass away for they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall and for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence it's talking about wicked people but since you are repenting since you are coming to the lord since you say i leave that alone i abandon that alone i'm coming to the lord now with all my heart that's why it says in verse 18 but 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 the path of the just the one who has repented the path of the just the one believing on the lord the path of the just is like the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day the way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at what they stumble my son attend to my words incline thine ear unto my sayings let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart for they are life unto those that find them and health tell me and health say it out aloud and health to all their flesh every part of your body will receive the divine healing touch of the lord Amen. keep thy heart with all diligence for out of each are the issues of life put away from thee a forward mouth put away from thee a forward mouth don't dig your grave with your teeth and don't allow your tongue to swerve you and get you away from the blessing of the lord that's part of what you have repented of it says put away from thee a forward tongue a forward mouth and perverse leaves put far from thee let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee ponder meditate ruminate think over the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established 
turn not to the right hand nor to the left remove thy foot from evil that's how the blessings of god will come on the faithful through faith we're looking at a faithful man and the one that had faith and god is bringing you to that life of faithfulness through faith so that the overflowing blessings of the lord by his power will work in your life hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 hebrews 11 what did he from verse 8 by faith abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance he obeyed and he went out knowing not knowing whither he went it says by faith abraham and we're looking at abraham now how he got fruitfulness in the time of famine how he got plenty in the time of poverty how he got heaven's showers heaven's abundance in the time of adversity and it says by faith abraham by faith abraham and let, let's join that with galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 verse 9 i want you to connect two words together one word is faith the other word is faithfulness galatians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 9 so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful abraham abraham went out by faith and abraham was faithful and because of the connection between the faithfulness and the faith you can see the outpouring of the blessings of god upon him upon his family upon his descendants and upon all the people that followed and this is the life of faithfulness and faith the lord is calling you to and i pray as god by his power in his strength helped abraham to be faithful and to have faith and then he blessed him abundantly you'll enter into that abundant life from tonight in jesus name genesis chapter 12 genesis chapter 12 what you didn't hear from verse 1 now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show thee the lord called abraham and he said get out of the familiar and get to a place i'm going to show you you've never been there you know there are people what hinders them from blessing is that they're in a particular place it might be a shed they might be suffering there and the whole roof might be leaking but that's what they're familiar with and it might be a mosquito invested place that's what they're familiar with and all around there may be terrible terrible things happening that's what they're familiar with and when you want to move there come out of that place and come to this new place because they're familiar with that they cannot be faithful they cannot leave that place and because they have associations and because they have relatives and because they have friends that for a long time they're used to that's where they are and the lord is calling them to a higher life and to a deeper life and to a greater life and to a broader life and the lord as the lord called abraham i pray your association your connection with anything familiar anything old will not draw you back will not keep you down and will not hinder you from getting the blessings of the lord in jesus name the lord said get out of thy country yes is thy country and from thy kindred yes they're your kindred and from your father's house yes it's your father's house or to land that i will show thee in verse two and i will make thee a great nation god has the power to make you great and that power will work in your life in jesus name 
think about it, think about it. You will not remain the way you are at this time. You will not remain at this level where you are at this time. I see you growing up. I see you climbing up. I see you achieving more and more in your life in Jesus' name. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curses thee. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. Tell me the first three words. Tell me out loud. So Abraham departed. No delay, darling. So Abraham departed. No waiting. So Abraham, Abraham departed. And there's no reasoning with flesh and blood. So Abraham departed. There's no consultation with anybody. So Abraham departed. And there is no doubt, no shadow of doubt. And so Abraham departed. And there is uh, no asking of any question. And so Abraham departed. If you will act promptly and come out of that darkness. If you will act immediately and come out of those things behind you. If you will act and obey the word of God without listening, without questioning, without doubting, without dilly-dallying, without asking questions. If you will come out, a time of blessing has begun already. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 8. Chapter 13, verse 8. And Abraham said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my hard men and thy hard men, for we be brethren. It's not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If thou, or if thou depart to the right, then I will go to the left. That's part of the faithfulness of Abraham. He was saying unto Lot, because the herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham, they had misunderstanding, strive. And it's like, no, I will take it. No, you will not take it. And Abraham had about that. And he said, strive will not help us to plug in into the power of God. Argument will not help us to connect with the power of God. Fighting, in fighting, will not help us to plug in into the power of God. I said, Lord, let's solve the problem. Every problem in your life will be solved. No fight with anybody. No violence with anyone. No wickedness exchange between anyone and you in Jesus' name. And so Abraham said, go to the right, I'll happily take the left hand side. Or go to the left, if that's what you want, happily, joyfully, I'll go to the right hand. Because of that, that's why God told Abraham that he will increase him. The Lord said unto Abraham, after, after that Lord had separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it unto thy seed forever. The Lord will do it. That's the faithfulness of Abraham. Faithfulness that will not fight. Faithfulness that will not quarrel. Faithfulness that will not grab anything. Faithfulness that will not push other people down so that I can get up. Look at chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 18. And makes Zedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham 
of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Can you see his path was a path of blessing because he was faithful to God and because he said the goodness of God will come upon me. I'm not going to allow strife, argument, violence, infighting to come between me and God. Because of that, even when he heard that Lord got into problem, he got 318 servants of his house together and then went after them and delivered Lord. And now Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace, came to him, this is the priest of the Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he, tell me, if you are there, last line of verse 20, and he, Abraham gave him the tithes of all. You see, at this time now, he said, I'm going to be faithful. I'm not going to withhold what I need to give to the Most High God. And this is the representative of the Most High God, the priest of the Most High God. And he's the king of peace, the king of Salem. And he gave him tithes of all. And in verse 21, and the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe lashet, and that I will not take any sin that is thine from Sodom, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich. You see that? He said, any gain of a righteousness, I'll not touch that. Any gain coming from the defilement of Sodom, I'll not touch that. Any gain coming from all the pollutions of the world, I'll not touch that. Any gain or profit coming from idolatry, I will not touch that. Any gain or any substance coming from occultism, powers of darkness, I'll not touch that. Lest Satan should say, lest Sodom should say, lest the occultic should say, I am the one that made Abraham rich. You see that man, he was faithful. You will be faithful. Chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the Lord did test, tempt, try Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Now a test was coming for Abraham and he passed the test. You'll pass every test that comes across your way. That's how we get faithful. That's how we maintain a faithfulness. That's how we're discovered that we're faithful. But you see, there are people, when a test is coming, they don't know it's a test. And because they do not know it's a test, they say, how can I do that? How can I go that far? How can I submit that? How can I sacrifice that? How can I surrender this? You will pass your test. I said you will pass your test. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a bond offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell thee of and abram rose early in the morning and saddled his ass 
and took two of his young men with him. And I seek a son and clip the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of the which God had told him. Thank God he passed the test. Thank God you will pass the test. Are you there? Or are you there? You'll pass your test in Jesus' name. Look at the result. This will happen in your life. I said this will happen in your life. Verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of, thy, of his enemies. And in, the, in thy sea shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because, because, because thou hast obeyed my voice. We're coming to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. The faith and the faithfulness. That's the faith you are manifesting at this time faithfulness that's what we are manifesting at this time and how wonderful blessings are coming upon your life how glorious blessings are coming upon your life from the right from the left from the center from the back from the front from above from beneath blessings upon your life in jesus name proverbs chapter 4 verse 16 sorry romans chapter 4 verse 16 Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end for the purpose that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but also to that which of the faith of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all soul. He's saying, whether you are Jew or Gentile, it's all by faith. The abundance to come by faith. The supply to come by faith. Salvation by faith. Holiness by faith. Holy Ghost baptism by faith. Abundance by faith. Healing by faith. Deliverance by faith. Prosperity by faith. Impossibilities become impossible all by faith. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, as though they were. He called it who against hope believed in hope. Every hopeless situation in your life will be turned around. So you believe in hope against hope that he might become the father. Of many nations according to that which is spoken so shall thy seed be and be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to God. Even before the answer comes, you are praising God already. Before the abundance comes, you are praising God already. Before the healing deliverance comes, you are praising God already. And being, being fully persuaded, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. We're coming to point number three now. The progress. You're making progress. The progress through more fellowship without filthiness. Fellowship without filthiness. 
We're reading from First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. For the more then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. As ye have received of us, what did they receive of him? Number one, repent and believe ye the gospel. That's what they received. And he said, if you have not acted on that, hurry up, repent, turn away from evil, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. As we have received of us, what did they receive of him? That God is light, in him is no darkness at all. And if you're in darkness and you want the blessings of the Lord, come out quickly, out of darkness, and come into the light. What did they receive of him? That who was whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you have not called. You call immediately and you say, Lord, I am here. I know I'm a sinner. All I've seen, I come short of the glory of God. I'm holding on now. Holding on to the Lord. I believe Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. And you hold on to him that as you have believed that you will abound more and more. What did he receive of him? That the just shall lay by faith. And if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But you have drawn back. You have slid him back. And you have come back into the old vomit. And the Lord is saying, I'm giving you another chance. I'm giving you opportunity that you will leave that old vomit. And you will leave all that backsliding lifestyle. And you come right now. And he says, you'll not waste time. Just like Abraham, when the Lord called him immediately, he responded to the call that you respond and then blessings will come upon your life. I said blessing will come upon your life. He says, have you have received of us how to walk? How are we to walk? Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. As you have received so that you'll walk and then you'll come back to the path of holiness and righteousness and you'll say, here is where I will live. Here is where I will abide. Look at verse 10. Verse, in verse 10, And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. You know what he's saying? He's saying uh, that demonstration of the life of love. That you have manifested in your family. Come here now. Manifest it here now. That faithfulness. You have manifested in your place of work. Wonderful. Come here now. Manifest that faithfulness as well. That as you have obeyed the word of God. In your district. In your local church. In your family. In your place of work as you have been faithful and people saw you that you're a faithful man a faithful woman it says now you increase more and more even as we are together let there be fellowship without faith without filthiness let there be love without licentiousness we're looking at acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 42 it says and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. These were people that have turned away from their sin. It says, let's take the right step from the first night here tonight. And say, Lord, I come out. I repent. I turn. I hold on to the Lord. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Is my Lord is that final sacrifice? Is my substitute? Is the one that shed his blood for me? And I take the efficacy of that blood. I take the power in that blood. Lord, I believe that that blood will cleanse me tonight. Will purge me tonight. Will purify me tonight. And then we come into the fellowship of the Son. 
fellowship with the Father and fellowship with the Holy Ghost and fellowship with the people of God and they will continue in this same doctrine then it says in verse 43 and all that believe were together and had all things common and then in verse 46 and he continued daily with one accord in the temple breaking bread, bread from house to house and did each their meat or gladness and singleness of heart. You will not fellowship with evil. You will fellowship with the people of God. And then the blessing of fellowship. The outpouring of the latter rain coming out of fellowship will be upon your life in Jesus name. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Reading from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Why this? What's the meaning of this? We have all been unbelievers. As we have known the, from the word of God, all have seen and come short of the glory of God. And the Lord is saying, Be not unequal yet together with sinners. We have all been in darkness. And he's saying, be not unequally yoked together with anyone in darkness. That means you were there before, come out of there. You were doing that before, come out of that thing. In occultism before, be not unequally yoked. You come out of that occultism. You say, I separate. I sever myself. I coach the court. Anything associating me with unbelief, with backsliding, with violence, with evil, with darkness, with immorality. I cancel everything. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with righteousness? What communion has light with darkness? You see it says come out of darkness. What concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? Come out of infidelity. Come out of atheism. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Come out of idolatry. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and it shall be my people. Verse 17, wherefore, tell me. Verse 17, wherefore, tell me. Let your neighbors hear. Are you ashamed of telling the person by your side? Wherefore, come out from among them. Among them who? Among them fellow unbelievers. Among them who? Among them who are in darkness. Among them who? Among them who are in unrighteousness. Among them who? Among them who are being with Belial or Satan. Among them who? Among them who are being with infidels. Come out of infidelity. Among them who? Among them who are idol worshippers. Come out. Among them who? Among them who have been walking contrary to God. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And then he says, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Give me a good amen. amen. Then in verse 1 of chapter 7, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Cleansing will come upon you. A new creation, you will be in Jesus' name. A new creature, you will be in Jesus' name. The time of blessing 
has now started for you. A new life. A converted life. A restored life. A transformed life. A prospered life in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. I thought my people are still there. And I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and bring fruit barren people wipe away those tears you are fruitful from tonight in Jesus name me losing and losing and losing all the loss has come to an end a new life has come in your life in Jesus name they shall increase and bring fruit and I will settle you after your old estates I will do better unto you than at your beginnings the good old days will come back. The good wonderful times will come back. The days of joy will come back. The time of victory has come back. I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 25, it says, Then for this to happen, the better things to come, the glorious things to come. The time of fruitfulness to come. It says then. Will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean. The devil will not make you dirty again. He will cleanse your mind. He will cleanse your heart. He will cleanse your spirit. He will cleanse every part of you. Internally. Externally. Everywhere. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I accept. Tonight, you will cleanse me. Tonight, you will purge me. Say, say, tonight, you will purge me. Tonight, you will make me new. You will do it in your life. In your heart also, will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you an heart of flesh. It's telling us in verse 25, it will convert those who need conversion. It will cleanse those who need cleansing. It will forgive everyone that needs forgiveness. He will give new life to everyone that needs the new life. Verse 26, it will sanctify. He will purify. He will make you holy. He will make us holy. He will give us a new heart. And then in verse 27, Holy Ghost baptism, and I will put my spirit within you. Give me a good amen. amen. At pouring of the spirit tonight, at pouring of power tonight, weakness will vanish away from you. The power of the Holy Ghost will be your inheritance in Jesus' name. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and uh, do them. Look at verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will yet for this, for what? To give you a better life, he says you must ask him. To multiply you, it says you must ask him. To cleanse you, it says you must ask him. To give you a new heart, it says you must ask him. To be filled and baptized in mass in the power of the Holy Ghost, it said you must ask him. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. Everything that has stopped growing will start growing from tonight. You will grow. Your life will grow. Your blessings will grow. And you are going to move on from scarcity unto sufficiency in Jesus' name. 
Let's rise up. Let's rise up and let the blessings begin right now. Let the blessings begin right now. He will do it. He will do it. He will do it. That's what he has promised. The promise of fruitfulness, more fruitfulness. The power for faithfulness, more faithfulness. And the progress in fellowship, more fellowship. Let's tell the Lord, let's tell the Lord, remind him, remind him of his promise. But he says, you do your part, come out of darkness, come out of sin, come out of evil, come out of violence, come out of wickedness, come out of occultism, come out of idolatry, come out from anything that is contrary to God and let the abundance of blessing begin tonight. Let the better life begin tonight. Let the increase begin tonight. Let the multiplication begin tonight. Tell the Lord is waiting to hear your prayer. 